National Streaming Sports is brought to you in part by BetUs.com, designed for true fans. NFL odds, week one, and futures. College football odds, including Heisman Trophy favorites and playoff odds. NBA odds of division winners and playoffs. Major League Baseball playoff and World Series odds. The National Hockey League Conference playoffs and Stanley Cup odds. And boxing wagers. Betting opportunities include versus the spreads and outright winners. Also, during the game. Use our link on our website, nessp.info, the Bet Us Opportunities webpage, for a 125% bonus on your first three deposits. Must be 21 years old. And remember, bet responsibly. You're going to call anyone that loves you. You're going to ask them if you can use their card to buy concert tickets because your card's maxed out. Okay. If they say yes, you get the tickets. I can't call my parents because they already think I make bad financial decisions. Well, so I think I'll call one of my friends. Okay. I'm a little, little nervous. I feel tingly Well, should not inside. answer. Giovanna? Yes. I was on SeatGeek earlier and I saw two tickets for Olivia Rodrigo at a really, really, really good price. So. Oh, my God. I maxed my credit card out by accident last week. Do you think I could use yours to buy the tickets? Oh my god, yes. Did I what? Yeah, you got the tickets. You got the tickets. I just want tickets. We're going to go to the concert together. Jeeva, I'll call you later. I love you. Thanks for picking up. Oh my god. I'm going to see Olivia Rodriguez. Yes, thank thank you, Siki. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls around the world. It's time to experience the O's on the original sports podcast. How do you max your credit card out by accident? Nobody does that except some like 22 year old. Okay. We'll just leave it at that. Fellas, stuff that says college of pro football, like drama, uh, whatever's inside that locker room on the practice field, uh, you know, at the club or on the game field, this sports has something that focuses on your attention to anything but the game at times. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we try to reel you in and focus you on the whole picture and how things happen on this episode. Uh, lots of things going on on the field. Uh, it's time for the OGs to start their rise and give us the football we deserve, though. That's how I feel tonight. How about you guys? I, I, introduce yourselves. It's a great night to talk sports, <laughs> fellas. But is it okay, Charles? I want to interfere. Yeah, man. Do you think? Do you think? <laughs> it's your do show. You I'm think? just here, man. I, hey, look. That, I, I don't even know why I'm here, man. I, it popped up on my phone. I'm supposed to be here, so I showed up here. I'm lost in the sauce, but I'll tell you what I'm not. I'm not buying Cleveland quite yet. I think the Yankees got something for them. I think the, I'm, I think the Yankees got something. I think it's going to come tonight. It has to come tonight because I'll tell you, Big B is really the only guy. I'm never going to talk about more about this, but thank you for the night. Okay. I mean, it's definitely a great time to be a sports fan. Definitely. I mean, you got everything. Ooh. College, pro, hockey. You got MLB. It's it's basketball starting up. It's a great time to be a sports fan. Great time to be a sports fan. You know what's in the buzz too, fellas? College basketball and pro basketball. I hear that in the buzz. I'm reading about it. I'm seeing some, some TikToks and some videos talking about some shit going on already. So it is a great time to be a sports fan. Hey, fellas, let me ask you a question real quick. Real quick, off the beaten path. Favorite Disney movie? Oh, Jesus. Well, are you talking about if we're going, hold on, was, I know... I'm looking right at him. Coach, coach, coach Boone and Sunshine. Yeah. yeah I can't even, yeah. I can't even remember the Titans? Yeah. Remember okay. the Titans? Oh, okay. Was Remember the Titans at Disney or were you talking about part two? Disney movies. I'm thinking like, is it Beauty and the Beast? Is this okay. uh, Cinderella? You know, so that's what talking here. Are you okay. talking Disney as in cartoon or any movie? Because wasn't I'm wasn't, talking any Disney movie. If you want to bring Remember the Titans along for the ride, <laughs> you go ahead and do that, brother man. Wasn't was it was that a Disney? Yeah. Okay. Oh, now man. if you, you go cartoon, what? if you're going cartoon, it was the little the little mermaid. Nice. If you're going cartoon. She was a cutie, huh? Red hair. Hell <laughs> with you. Everybody, it's Nemo. Anybody give a damn about that? It's all about Nemo. Damn fish. Yeah, Dory drive me crazy. Oh, my fish comes back so much. He's got more than nine lives. A cat. He's got like ten lives. 
Hey, listen, I'm going to go a little bit out of the box here on this, though. Myself, I'm going to go Pixar. I'm going to go Toy Story 1. Because uh. Pixar's owned by Disney. I got, I'm got. i down with it. You know, okay. they're making another. Hey, they're making another freaking Toy Story in like 2026 or something. It's going to be released. I'm a little pumped up. It's in my calendar already. Wow. Yeah, even as an old ass man, I still I like that I stuff. Really ever got into? I don't know if I ever got into that like that. Yeah, I, I, am I old? I mean, I don't have no kids. Did, y'all, is, did you get into this kind of stuff with kids, and they, they got you into this kind of thing? I, yeah, I don't have kids either. But see, because I never got it really into cartoons either. So I like all the car, the Avengers, the Marvels, the DC. I never watched yeah. it. I've never seen any of those movies. I did see the original. Yeah. I saw Spider Man. I've never seen any of the Hulks. Never. I've never seen any of the movies. None. You've lived that life. Of, You've lived that life. <laughs> hey, G. Richardson said it's the Lion King for him. All right, Glenn. <laughs> I'm done. Mufasa, baby. Mufasa. Yeah. Hey, before we go any further, if you check out the comments, we got our link trees in there for ESEN, Elite Sports and Entertainment Network, as well as the link tree in there for Original Sports Podcast with Mark Maraday and the Barbershop crew. Fellas, uh, I'm also going to throw a, a little – a little QR code in there for you later. If you're looking for some tickets, uh, SeatGeek, there's a 20% discount on this on this code. It's also going to be out there for you on our web pages and everything. So uh, just a little something-something for everybody out there trying to spread the love around. But let's get into talking some sports, fellas. I had it all laid out for us where we were going to go, but then all of a sudden uh, I start teaching today and my phone goes off. Next thing I know, Devonta Adams is, is with his lover, uh, up in up in New York with the Jets, he, he he rejoins the old man who can't throw the ball anymore. Uh, thoughts on that? Uh, Adams going to New York Jets. I think I will tell you exactly what I think. It's going to put all the pressure on you know, on on um what on Rogers, excuse me, because he literally got the coach fired. You know, he brought in Devontae when the guy came up. If this guy doesn't produce at this point. You just gotta say it's time to hang it up, guy. You gotta hang it up. And I mean, yeah. but I will say this from Devonte. I'm glad I'm leaving hell and at least getting into purgatory. Yeah, but I mean, like he's gonna play one year with that dude. They're gonna eat that whole contract. You know that, right? The Raiders yeah, didn't pick up anything. That's why they got it. That's why the Jets got him. Yeah, because the, the other team negotiated. I didn't read what the terms were, but I thought they renegotiated. Now again, I don't know what the terms were. Uh, but I didn't see, see that they piece of it. They might have pushed it out a few more years. I didn't see it. Well, I didn't see the terms either. I didn't see that piece of it. But I'll tell you what. He's 32 years old. I get it. They got Garrett Wilson there who's already having problems with uh, with Mr. Lava Lava Man. Um, Devontae at 32? I thought Devontae was at 30. I was thinking he was right He's 32. Wow. He's 32. Oh, so oh, that, that was a little shocking to me. Then later on in the day, the Bills finally strengthened up their receiving core with a, a great route runner in, in yeah. uh, Amari, Amari Cooper. Yeah, I know Amari was 30, um, and I think he would be a big a big boost for those guys. You know, I mean, Now, I he played for your squad on their end. Back you know? back in the day, right? He played for your squad down there? Yeah, he played for he, – yeah, he, yeah he, he played for our squad, and then I think – and then the, the – was us, Cleveland. I forget where, he, where we got him from, but Cooper. It, was in Arizona, it might have been Arizona, I'm thinking – I'm not sure, no. but yeah, but Amari is 30, so you know, he's got Amari was with the Raiders. Long. I don't think he's you know, probably not like you know, what I'm saying at 30. He's a hell of a route runner, though. No, he still had a thousand yards over the last two or three seasons. He he's still productive. Yeah. It's funny though, because when they got rid of Diggs, they made it sound like we're good, we love our receiving core. Allen is Superman, he doesn't need help, we're good. Now, five, six weeks into it, five, six games. Let's revamp. Let's go get us a receiver. So, you know, it, and I'm and I'm whatever they're doing in in New, New York. I thought it was real. It was real dirty. It was dirty poker. How Rogers blamed that on Williams yesterday. You underthrew him regardless of where you thought it was going. I rewatched that play numerous times. He said the guy throws his hand up and three guys go with him. It was two guys in the official. You did see three, but you didn't differentiate the official between your opponents. And you just flat – that's three weeks straight. They had the ball in their their Superman's hand. They got Rodgers for this, and he hasn't delivered, fellas. He hasn't delivered. So you can go get Devontae if you want, and that just shows, again, 
why I don't have an issue when they say these entitled athletes. Because you keep doing this. Is entitled. The guy went and spent a damn like weeks or whatever in a damn dark room. What that's what I'm, dark room? But, that, but but that's what I'm saying. If you're letting him do this, you're creating this type of dude. He gets the coach fired. He hasn't come through for three weeks, and then you go get him more offensive help. Now, this is going to sp- supposed to be what solves it. He's calling Yo, players off, calling players under Yo, the bus. Top. Welcome to corporate America, yeah. baby. It's so I just America, I baby. I still hope they finish in the bottom of the division. <laughs> I hope, I, man, I I wish the Jets nothing but failure. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, after what he did, throw it, throwing Salea under the bus like that. Bullshit. As soon as I saw him push that guy, I mean, I, Soleil had to have done all he could not to fucking knock him out because I personally would have just punched him right in the face. Of course he would. I, I have I, no I respect for that dude. That they uh, demoted Hackett down, right? What yeah. Is that, like a wide receiver coach or something? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Exactly. Play calling away from him. So, and <laughs> Hackett was supposed doing, to be man. Roger's boy. Hackett was supposed to be Roger's boy. So. I don't know, man. I just I wish ill will on the Jets and whatever they get, they deserve. I Rogers has no boys. He honest. has no friends. Brett Favre went to the Jets. He went to the Jets. Everybody's going to the Jets, and then where do they wind up? In Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. That's right. You yeah. got Kirk Cousins. Never mind. Yep. Okay, fellas. Rafael Nadal. Nadal won a record fourteen career French Open championships was the first player to win 22 Grand Slam men's single titles. Retired. Yeah. Where does he rank among the greatest in the sport? Man, regardless of who you're going, you can't put him. You cannot put him any lower than four. And I'd say three. But I would say you you can't put him any lower than four. It can't be. And that's pushing it. Like, I'd say top three. I'd say top three of all time. Got to be. That's where I was with it too. Yeah, yeah. I I had mine as obviously Serena Williams. I had it one. Um, I think Nadal. Oh, excuse me, Nadal, not Nadal. I put Nadal right after Pink Sampras. I had Sampras, Nadal, and then I went back to Venus. Uh, Venus, and then after that, I think I went to Fredier, and then McEnroe and uh, Agassi at the end of all that. Wow. Okay. See, the, I've had it totally different. I went strictly men. I had Djokovic. Well, he said all time. I think I think he does. I think he could go one or two in the men specifically, but he ain't better than Serena. Serena. Got well, and that's what, well. If you, uh, if I, you mean, do. So, I guess I don't know. We're saying are we saying tennis? Like you said, is it all time? Or well, I went. I went just. I went just men. I went just men, and I did. I'm not going to lie to you, fellas. I had. I did have Djokovic number one. I had Djokovic number yeah, one. Yeah, you have to. I had. It was close, and I think only because at the end of it, I I had Nadal, uh, I had Federer a whisker above Nadal, but I didn't put any women in it. But since Jay went with Serena, now that throws that that yeah. Now you got to put Serena in there. You know what I'm you've saying? Got, you've so, had some great. To me, yeah. you've had some great women tennis players that yeah. it really changes the dynamic. I would say Nadal yeah. is in the top five still. Yes, with, absolutely. with his accomplishments. <laughs> But I mean, yeah, look, you, you got know, 22 grand slams, 14, like you said, French opens. I mean, yeah, you're definitely in there. I mean, I think it was Sampras, I believe he had, what was it? Uh, it was six in earnings, 64 career titles. You know, I mean, and then look at what he did at Wimbledon. I mean, he had back to back consecutive streaks at Wimbledon. He had what, three, three years? Then he had like a break, and then he had like four consecutive after that. I mean, but I definitely would put Nate Dahl at probably the number two guy. I can see him at number two. I think Sampras is still number one for me. Wow. So you got Sampras over Djokovic. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. How about guys like uh, Martin? Uh, well, guys like, but uh, how about <laughs> like Bjorn Borg, uh, John McEnroe, Jimmy top Klein? 10. Top 10, but not as high as four and five to me, but I put him in the top 10. Yeah. I, I hey, well, I'm sorry. What was the question again? I said, how, how about when you factor in guys like, uh, John McEnroe, Jimmy Connors, uh, Bjorn Borg, you know, yeah, even I've Arthur Ashe. You know, you got them guys in tears. I think what we're talking about, you know, with with the uh, Sampras, you know, and, and, and the Serena's and the Doll, that's like that level one. And then I put them guys in like level twos, and then after that, down to level threes. I mean, because McEnroe still was not like Sampras. I mean, I think McEnroe had 
Uh, I want to say it was uh, one. He has one Aussie Open, one French Open. He's got three Wimbledons, but a lot of these other guys got like streaks of Wimbledon. So that's yeah. why I put him in that second tier. I think McEnroe was more of a personality in the game because he was off it the really chain. Was. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you. But, and then, but, he, but he could only be that way because he did win. Because he did win. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So that, that puts him up there too. But see, it's also hard for me in a lot of sports like this where you're going with throwback players where – just physically, they weren't big, strong, fast. They didn't take care of the body the way they do now, where it's harder for me to place those guys in those sort of sports against guys playing football or guys playing basketball where they got more physical, whatever have you. But Actually, you can because man. they're going against their own people at that percent. You take that basis, are they, how are they in their own specific class, and how did the other guy do his specific class? You can, you can, you can kind well, of measure that out, right? But see, I look at that as the same way. If you're All-American – at D1, that's significant talent you're going against that if you're going again, you're All-American in an NAI. There are a few guys that are NAIA that yeah. can last. You know, like I look at some of these guys that are running bases, were running bases years ago, like Willie Mays. Willie Mays, to me, could have played in any air. Baseball in in in, in So in, could in, Clemente. In, in, yeah, in any air. But there are just some guys when I look, it's like, damn, I think, you know, you look at it, golf was one of the ones, like some of the clubs they used back then compared to what they're using nowadays. It's not it's not to me fair. And then you look at some of these guys when they were pitching back then, if they had 80 mile per hour fastballs before, the 50, that's great. Now guys are throwing 90s to 100s like it ain't nothing. So that that's why it's hard. You know, what I mean, and it's sort of a disservice because the way they take care of their body now and the treatments they get where these guys, some of these guys re- riding in stage coaches playing double headers <laughs> and they're still out there tough as nails playing. Or these athletes today. Oh, no, I can't. My 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 all my arm hurts. Are you kidding What's me? That LeBron? Man, pretty much. You know, I the only other comment I'll make on that is I'd love to give like the tools that the players have today Ooh. to the to the players back in the day. I'd love to see Babe Ruth hit a baseball today. Oh, like man. he was playing in, in a basically a dead ball era with yes. fucking something they just ripped off a tree. Can yeah. you imagine him with the stuff he would have? He'd hit like 110 home runs a year. The man yeah. just had an eye for swinging. You know, you yeah. could say what you want. You could say, oh, yeah. he didn't face. He didn't face the guys from the Negro League. I get that piece of it. It makes sense to me. But even those guys, like, can you imagine some of those guys that were in the Negro League who are now part of the statistics of Major League Baseball, how much greater their stats would have been if they were playing with today's tools? It would have just been incredible. So, hey, let's move on a little bit here. Let's talk a little college football. Bama escaped South Carolina after losing to Vanderbilt. Is DeBoer the guy in Alabama? He's playing with – he is still playing with with uh, Saban's players, but is his system working with them? Does he instill the same discipline? You know, is he as hard on his coaches as Saban might have been to make them instill the discipline? What's missing, fellas, because I don't see the same type of Alabama team? I don't think you would because they're not the same type of coach, probably have different philosophies. I still think at the end of the day, though, they're still at number seven, right? They're there regardless. He's got, he, he has them winning. You know, it may not be the prettiest of wins, okay? But he's got them winning. So he's only lost once. So I, I think when you're taking over for a guy that was king of the living room and you go down a little bit in your draft status because you don't quite have that money like everybody else is doing it, I think he's doing the best with what he got. And he's still got them guys being raw and competitive. Yeah. I mean, he did work at Washington. It took him time to get his players, his systems. Now, again, your players is kind of hard because of the NIL. You're getting new players every year. Every year. But here's my thing. Fellas, they got Tennessee this week. We talked about this last week. If if they end up with two losses, do you think they can even make the play? I still thought they could make the playoffs. Some of you guys told me if they get two losses, you don't think they'll even make the playoffs. With 12 teams this year, I think they'll still get in. But I think they get out just because of the strength of schedule. To be yeah. Honest. So, but here's yeah. my thing. I was gonna pull that one out, right? So yeah. If they if they end up with two losses, if they end up with two losses, yes, Saban had two losses a couple times in seasons, but he also won natties. He also won chips. His first season in Bama, if he gets, if he gets to, or he finishes the season with two losses. I'm not going to say they're firing, but how hot is that seat? What is he hearing from the boosters? It can't be pleasant. 
If they, they can't get rid of him after Rock. one year, though. They got to no. give him a window. That's they got to give him a window yeah, to I mean, adjust. You got to give him time to get up a recruiting class. He just literally took over from Saban, so there may have been uh, you know a transitional fluctuation in recruits because they don't know which way it's going. But now, that if, as long as he keeps Bama in the twelve, whether he wins or not, just keep him in the top twelve or top six. And they'll get a better recruiting class because then they'll realize, oh, yeah, they're stabilizing. Now we know. So I think he's in that fluctuation point. But I think he's pointing north and not south. I think Georgia is the one I think is facing south. And I think Texas is going to show it to him this week. Hey, listen, I think Lamar's comment, this first comment Lamar made, uh, system is fine, discipline is in there. I don't know what kind of DeBoer, uh, what kind of discipline DeBoer runs. I think he needs to learn his coaching staff and how to enforce it via his coaching staff because it's just not the head coach when you're dealing at that level. You know, we, we yeah. just don't know yeah. that. It's just not the head coach. I agree with him there. I agree with him here too. SEC will easily get four teams in there because it's the SEC. There's no question about it. And me. I don't honestly, I don't have an issue with that because they are they are now again. If you're starting to give me a lot of SEC teams and they may have because Georgia, if if they can beat Texas on the road, that it Kirby Smart. Woo, I tip my hat to Kirby Smart. If they can beat Texas in Texas. So I'm looking for Georgia to have two losses. Fellas, I'm not so sold. Bama's getting out of Tennessee out of Rocky Top with a win. Oh, I think they'll I'm lose that either. game. I, mean, I do think they'll lose that game. Yeah. I so, do. Yeah. If a team like Vanderbilt could bite him in the ass, but at the same time, does that Vanderbilt loss sting so bad at Bama that now they want to come back and reclaim the ship? Don't rule out Bama quite so fast because sometimes you get punched in the mouth, you take Jay, a step back, but you come back honestly, harder. I, I thought that too, and I thought South Carolina was going to be a victim of that. I thought they were going to run buckshot through South Carolina. And when they didn't, wow, that that's what – that's what had me like, uh-oh, there might be some real issues here in Bama, only because I expected them to come out, run buckshot through through South Carolina, put a hurting on those cats, and then move on to Tennessee. That's not what happened. So you're right. So maybe they regroup, come out pissed, and do something this week. But, man, it's going to be a tough one in Rocky Top. Man, we'll that find out. Be, I, I do agree with you. I think this is going to be another great college football weekend, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be another. I went to see Ole Miss in, in uh, South Carolina. That's why I missed shows and stuff like that. Um, South Carolina quarterback's just not very good. He's just not very good. In, in fact, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus here. My kid that plays plays down there. He and I, he and I were candid, and I said, "Brother, he you you're losing games because you don't have a quarterback." He would not throw him under the bus either. That's his teammate. Yeah. But he just kind of looked at me, <laughs> and I could read his yeah. mind, man. They had him by the balls when they recovered that onside kick on the I other know. side of the fifty. That's I one know. completed pass. You kicked the field goal, and it's over. Yeah, it's over. This fucking <laughs> this freaking guy can't even do that job. You know, like he might be a great kid, might be a great runner with the football, but if you can't throw the football, whether it's in college, pro, high school, pee wee, you got to be able to throw it a little bit. If you can't throw the football, then you can't be a quarterback. Bottom yeah. line, bottom line. Uh, Lamar thinks that the board's okay. He says he's fine. He's new, and uh, the board will give him, will give him, you know, give him a little break. And he says Bama has Shula. Uh, your boy G Richardson here made a comment. One thing I learned, whether it's sports or other things, you never follow the man. You never yeah. follow the man. Mm. So. Uh, interesting, interesting there. Hey, uh, let's Army move into the you see Army. Can we put some damn respect on Army for crying out loud? Oh, please. <laughs> Army and Navy. Navy's undefeated too. And my Pitt Panthers. My Pitt Panthers are 6 and 0. <laughs> it's just time to put some, it's time to put some respect. <laughs> Those teams are all ranked under, under 18, right? Our Army's what? Yeah. I, 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 I didn't see they were ranked. My, my boy, did, I just got it via text. And all it said was Army's ranked. And he starts putting, he puts a whole bunch of 23, happy Army's 23, Navy's 25. And okay, pitch so 20. The Army's 23. But those are all okay. undefeated teams that are 20 is, is that and crazy lower. or what? I think Army's like, uh, what, 12 and 0 now? Uh, since last year in addition, I think they're like, I think they're on a 12 win streak right now. 12 game, 12 game win streak. That's yeah, nuts. there's just, just no love out there for some of these teams. You know, we, we keep hearing the same old shit. Penn State moved up to three. Why? Because they got a, 
They got another yeah, great that was official. Shit. I didn't like and, Penn State up there. I thought, know, I that, thought that's if anybody's going to be up there, maybe Ohio. Yes, Glenn. Yes, Indiana University undefeated. Yep. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Hey, fellas, the new college football rankings are out. You agree with the top 10? No, 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 no. I like I think Texas is good. I think Oregon is good. I think if you get I think maybe Ohio should have been at three, Penn State should have been at four. Uh, but after that, I was I was okay with it. I think Tennessee, you know, they I think the, their one loss came to unranked Arkansas. I didn't really like that a whole lot. And I felt like maybe they could have been at 12, maybe Notre Dame because they had the, the win over Texas could have been at eleven. But other than that, I mean the rankings are kind of they're, I mean they're okay. All right, I'm looking at I'm looking at ESPN's rankings: Texas one, Oregon two, Penn State three, yeah, Ohio State four, Georgia yeah. five, Miami six. And Miami should have two losses, fellas. I'm sorry, they should have two losses. But again, they got a little loving. Um, uh, Alabama five and one, number seven. LSU five and one, number eight. Iowa State six and zero oh, at nine, yeah. and Clemson five and one at ten. And then you go to Tennessee, Notre Dame, BYU, Texas A&M, Boise, Indiana. Indiana 6-0 is the whole way down at 16. I did not look at the schedule, but had they played any ranked teams? Or has it all just been small-town schools? It has been been basically – I don't really count that. For Indiana – they they have man they they haven't played anybody just yet no they haven't that's what played I'm that's, what, that's why they are where they are they beat UCLA and they beat Northwestern those are the biggest name now they got Nebraska next week and they still yeah, don't even play really Nebraska they don't know they don't even play a ranked team until they play Michigan at twenty four and that yeah. is it, you know what second week in November I don't so, even consider beating Maryland laying the ass to anybody because Maryland I, I don't know if Maryland will win again this year. To be yeah. honest with you, and I, I, I'm right there with them, you know. But I don't, uh, I, I don't understand how Oregon had six number one votes because OSU loses that game, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that was just a mental breakdown. He just the quarterback just didn't Howard didn't realize where he was on the field because in Texas, honestly, fellas, who has looked better than them? Regardless, of who they, I mean, and. So I, I give I, I give Texas I got to give that credit. Texas is the number one squad in the land. And to be honest with you, I told you before, I hate these rankings until about the fifth week, fifth or sixth game of the season is when I'd like for them to start, you know, ranking. Because again, Penn State, they haven't played a whole lot. You know, it's a Pennsylvania team, so I'll give them love. But right now, honestly, if Penn State plays Ohio State, I'm going with Ohio State. If Penn State plays Georgia on a neutral field, I'm going with Georgia. You yeah. know what I mean? So you tell, regardless of what your rankings are, but it is what it is. But again, once these playoffs start, fellas, they're going to help because teams, I got a high ranking. So you may get an easy team the first first yeah. week, first round, but I, I can't wait for these playoffs. I'm All right, I'll, tell you what I, I'll tell you what I do like is the fact that, man, not, this, this year for Texas was huge, right? Archie Manning. First SEC game, Mississippi State is looking good. It's playing good. It's looking nice. That's a future killer. Not only are we going to get it this year, but we're going to get it next year. You just got a glimpse of next year, Yeah, baby. Quinn Ewers is going. Is, he's yeah. going. They, they're saying he's a top five quarterback. I think he's yeah. in the top two currently. Yeah. Ewers. I, I do. I really do. He's got size, and he's got smarts, and he's been in, the, in New York. You know, uh, yeah, I, think, I could yeah. see that easily. I mean, the Raiders. Or yeah. the Raiders, or the Raiders. Yeah, hey, depending on who, who, yeah, I guess who falls first. I, I guess going back to Penn State, they go to Wisconsin this week. No, they go to Wisconsin on the twenty sixth. Then they got Ohio State at home, Washington at home. Then they go to Purdue. Then they've got uh, they go to Minnesota, and then they finish up with Maryland. So what they could lose to Ohio State. Technically, looking at this, they could lose to Ohio State. Maybe uh, Wisconsin in Wisconsin, maybe Minnesota in Minnesota, but they really don't have a tough road ahead. You yeah. know, like I, they, they're, they're probably going to lose one of those, but uh, they don't have a tough road ahead of them. They they no Michigan yeah. on that schedule. Do they hold their own fate in their hand. You can't ask for anything more. You can't. Yeah, I mean, ask they, for here's more. who they played. I, I before they before they beat USC, the their opponent's record was. Uh, 10 and 
14. Their opponent's win-loss record was 10 and 14. They beat West Virginia. They beat Bowling Green. They beat Kent State. They beat Illinois. Uh, they beat UCLA, and then they beat USC. But UCLA and USC, neither of them were ranked. Penn State struggled with USC. Struggled. Yeah. So uh, it'll yeah. be interesting to see the way that plays out. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about – a little bit about baseball because we got baseball. It's kind of in the home stretch here. Uh, ALCS, you got the Yankees and the Indians. The Yankees' bats were cold for a long time, except Stanton. He finally woke up after a couple of years of taking a nice long nap. Man, he's been pounding the shit out of the ball. But that Indians <laughs> pitching runs deep. The Indians pitching runs deep. Uh, thoughts on that, fellas? What sticks out to you? I think it was a Garrett Cole versus BB, I believe, tonight, correct? Yes, yes. And you know, BB has got a 2.08 ERA to Cole's, I think, three. And if I'm not mistaken, Stanton, I don't know where the hell this man came from. It sure was another regular season. But man, has that guy showed up in the postseason? Yeah. The only problem is, well, and, and the playoffs have been interesting, and they've been fun to watch, exciting to watch. It just bothers me. Who was it? Was that Cole that went six, seven innings the other night? Was that Garrett Cole? I think for you, where you're not seeing that anymore. You know what I'm seeing? And all these guys are going, what, what did they, what did they win? The uh, Guardians. Then they win one game with six pitchers or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that's not how I, that's, I'm, I'm not, I don't like that sort of baseball. So I'm not, I'm behind the times on that. I understand things are changing. I love seeing the starter. Go, give me a good six, seven innings. Get your middle reliever. If he can go three, great. But if he can give you two and then bring your pay, remember your Pedro. Remember Ramirez. They I come in and shut. This. That, that's I'm right. Tell you this man, hey, uh, Aaron Judge. He better come with a little bit more than that one thirty three batting average. Yeah, that's really man. Better than game one. I mean, that's Bonds esque. Yeah, you can't. You got to have more than just that. So yeah. I mean, Soto's pulling his weight. Stanton's pulling his weight. And then on Judge, night, I, typical Judge disappears. I'm, on Monday night, I do 108 Stitches baseball podcast with the guys from South Florida uh, Tribune, Scott Morgan Roth and, and George Icorn, uh, Trent Clark are the are the regulars on there. And we were talking last night uh, uh, with Eric Katz, another guy who was on it last night. We were talking about how um, they were using openers like the Pirates had used openers. Uh, you're bringing in a bullpen guy for a couple innings, and you bring in another bullpen guy for a couple innings, and another guy for a couple innings. It's almost like Cleveland could do that and win because their bullpen is deep. It is. The bats got to get live, though. The bats have to get live because yeah. you realize with that roster, and I understand Judge has been cold as leftover pizza, but, but. If he gets hot, you and you never know what he's capable of. That's that's the kill. So those Guardians bats have to come alive. The pitching will be there. The pitching's been deep throughout the playoffs in the season. That's helped them. And the crazy part is, let me ask you this, fellas: Are you going with the Yankees to win this series, or are you still think it could be close? You got the Yankees winning it. I got the Yankees and Dodgers in the finals. Yeah. Okay. So everybody's series. I still I don't think it's one hundred percent for me completely sold on that. I mean, it just depends on. How the you know the bullpen for me and uh, that Weaver man if you, if you get if you if you're gonna do anything you better get it done in those middle innings or try to get his best on the early innings because Weaver and uh, what's what's the other guy's name uh, help me out oh um the other reliever me, <laughs> yeah oh my God, demoted see I can't remember his yeah. damn name <laughs> um yeah but but see yeah. to me and, and I know because they've got that bullpen they've got relievers and they have pitching but I would go 75-25. It's the Yankees going to win this, if not 80-20. I, you know, 80% of me says Yankees. But in the regular season, they only won two more games than the Guardians. So it should be a closer. It I'll, should hey, be a closer. I'll tell you but, hey, Cleveland and New York both were at six hits each. The only difference is New York was able to drive them home. My thing to say for Cleveland is when you – Get those guys on base. Gotta get, get them. Yeah, gotta back. get them home. Oh, yes, manufacture yes. your runs. Got I'll to. say, I'll say this about it: those two teams played steady baseball all year in the National League with the Mets and the Dodgers. A little bit of a different story, okay? The Dodgers played pretty much steady baseball all year, but the Mets got red hot. Yeah, yeah, they were uh, like the they late were, June, early July, whatever it yeah, was. They were like, the and, and they are riding a red hot team. 
Okay, I know they lost the first one, but they they bounced right back. They split yeah. in yes. they split in L.A. That's yes. that yeah. says something about yeah. them. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. really. I, no, actually, think I like, about the, this. I like the Severino matchup uh, for the Mets uh, over at Bueller because I think Bueller's got like a ten point eight and zero ERA right now, zero for one, and uh, Severino's done pretty good. He's got a four point five or yeah, four point five. But the WHIP is really good. He's got one point three three to Bueller's one point six zero. So I feel like. The pitching is in favor of the Mets. You know, they just got to make sure that they can match it with the bats and not yeah, have right. to go to waste. I'll tell you what. I watched the first game. I didn't get to see the second one because I was teaching. Uh, the Dodgers, once they start hitting, they don't stop. Like, what, what, once one guy starts hitting, it's all downhill. Like, every guy so coming up. up. There's no between – he came between Hernandez, between Mets, between Freeman, between their look that that means Otani. Yes, where's where's well, the yeah, look at Otani, that lineup? Otani's got what a triple two uh ERA or I mean batting average and bets is at 192. I mean, it's not like the Dodgers are playing lights out baseball on the bats either. All we got all you gotta just put up a few runs, I would say at least three, and then really ride that pitch and, and ride that defensiveness. Ooh. My last comment on this, and then you guys can make another comment if you'd like, but three of the four teams have the highest payrolls in baseball. Yes. And this is yeah. why I have a problem with major league baseball. Yeah. Yes. I'm a lowly pirates fan. When I talk about them, I should have a freaking <laughs> bag over my head. Okay. Chop. Same thing. He's a lowly pirates fan, yeah. but you know, baseball lets this happen. They, they let this happen. No offense to the Astros or anybody like that, but they Small let this team, happen yeah. and they don't care. You know, I, I have a problem with that because growing up back in the day, because Chops and I are old bucks, uh, back in the day, it was an even playing field. Guys weren't moving all over the place for $500 million. It's it's hard for me to watch the scrap that they bring into Pittsburgh and then watch teams sign guys that they could have signed for a fraction of what the guy might have been worth. You know, uh, yeah, but yeah. that's just my, you know, that's me going off on a tangent. But like I said, three of the four teams are the highest paid salaries in baseball. Uh, before we move on to to the NFL a little bit here, fellas, uh, Jay, go ahead and tell them, tell them a little bit about you, where they can find you, uh, about your show. Uh, give them the lowdown, buddy. Yeah, so you can catch me um, usually Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Coast to Coast over at Northeast Streaming Sports. And then you can also find me on Unscripted. Me and Logan usually go out Thursdays live. Uh, you can find us on the uh, ESCN uh, Facebook page. Uh, also, what, TikTok, everywhere else. I mean, we're all over the place. So, yeah, I'm out there. Just, just go to ESCN you know, and pull it in. You'll pull it up. Chops, you want to give them the lowdown on it? Thanks, Jay. Uh, you want to give them the lowdown on your new show? Oh, uh, haymakers and haymakers and submissions. I Are love. You say strippers, haymakers and strippers. Oh, wouldn't be you a bad a, thing. Wouldn't be a bad thing. I'll tell you what, you get some people. <laughs> but I love yeah, it, man. Haymakers and submissions. Down there. It's a it's a combat sports podcast. So anything boxing, I bet it is. MMA. Uh, we love it, man. Wrestling, not WWE wrestling. The Greco Roman <laughs> freestyle wrestling. Mud wrestling. You know, yeah. What? If they start banging at it hard, we'll get it. Man, right, this no old lady here, fighting sir. bingo, no I'll put it on. <laughs> check out our guy, Jay. Or check out Glenn. Hey, making them dollar dollar bills, making it rain for the strippers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Hey, let's move along, fellas. Um, I want to talk about an injury before we go any further. And I, and I want to pick your brains a little bit. Hey, Aiden Hutchinson. Fellas, his injury was brutal, 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 brutal. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it reminds me of when Tim Crumry broke his leg. It reminds Ooh. me of when when uh, Theismann broke his yeah. leg. Those yeah. were career-ending injuries. I hope this young buck doesn't have a career-ending injury, but he's got a long road to hoe. Now, my question to you is, first of all, if you're out there and you haven't seen it, Google it. Aiden Hutchinson of the Detroit Lions broke his leg making a play on a quarterback, but make, fluke hey, make accident. Sure, hey, but make sure you're different. There's a difference between breaking it and fracturing. He didn't break it. He <laughs> fractured it. Yeah. And he broke it like Theismann did. He broke it, you know, like those guys, or Alex Smith did. Yeah, it probably would be a career ender. But he only fractured it. It's so – it's not as bad as you think, man. They Hey, look, Campbell is already fully expected. He has not ruled out that he won't be back for the playoffs. I'm just wow, that's interesting. Yeah, he's already come out and said it. He, he, he said well, that. Well, he, he is only, what, 24? 
He's like yeah, they put, he was in surgery that night. That yeah, night, yeah, in the yeah, Detroit, yeah, or, excuse me, in the Dallas I had him. I had him pegged to be uh, NFL defense, or I had him defensive player of the year. That was my that was my sleeper yeah, pick. Sure. He was playing like it. Uh, but what? Why so many injuries in football anymore? I, I, I mean, think about some of the guys that are out. When I okay, we all play fantasy football. Think yeah, about right. some of the guys we don't have playing between yeah. CMC, Puka Nakua. Aid Hutchinson. Well, I mean, like why, the list goes. A lot of those teams weren't playing their starters at all, hardly. There was a lot of teams out there that didn't even play their starters in preseason. Yeah. And then you were to come out cold and come up against these guys at full contact. Well, yeah, I'm sure you probably will. Probably the other one is the amount of games now that they're stretching the season out by. You know, and, I mean, and, and then of course, then it goes also just down to lack of conditioning yeah. and some of these athletes not taking care of their body. And it was, and that was crazy on Hutchinson's. Because that to me was that that to me that that play when he swung his leg and that shin on shin we call that shin on shin in Muay Thai when you're throwing a kick. I would expect him to scream. I would expect him to yell. But the way that broke, it was almost like that's just a freak accident. I, you yeah. know, he's rolling whatever, and because it'd be different if he just swung and he just hit somebody's helmet, the crown of somebody's helmet, whatever. But it was he hit another man's <laughs> shin. And it was man, it was it was it was a freak accident. That was rough, man. That was rough. Yeah, I mean that's very that's the thing though, right? I mean you got the hip drop, uh, tackles is hurting guys. You got guys like you said, offensive linemen that are rolling on top of these receivers, and and I mean three hundred pounds like Nick Chubb. You know we got three hundred pounds, and they're taking left and right all at the same time. I mean, yeah, I mean that's just a lot of it's freak. But I mean let's be honest though, I really think though they needed more conditioning. Um, before they just got put out there, which is what they're doing. Now. They really don't hit in camp either. I go every no, year really to Steeler camp, and they don't bang there. You know, uh, I mean, I, I say that's part of part of it. I agree with you, but they, they got to figure that piece out because we shouldn't be watching the NFL and all the top uh, – many of the top stars are out for the better part of the season. Uh, big shout-out to, to Linda – the graph out there, uh, yes, I am Mark, not Mike. And I'm, I guess I'm kind of honored that you said I look like your cousin, Mike Gellion. Uh, you know, he's probably a hell of a good looking guy with ladies all over the place. I, yeah, but uh, thanks for watching us. Uh, she's on our Roku channel. I uh, appreciate that. That's that's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, let's keep going on the NFL, fellas. Uh, Vikings go to Detroit, Chiefs go to San Francisco. Who's going to be undefeated? Vikings. I'm gonna go Vikings. I'm gonna go Vikings. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I yeah think... It's getting it's in Minnesota, and let's be honest. Now that um, uh, what's his name over there, uh, Aiden Hutchinson is now he's on the IR. That's a big part of that defense, and that secondary is suspect. And I swear, Darnold is having the time of his life in this offense. Brian Flores is coaching that defense, and them boys is executing. Are you not rooting for Darnold? Because you know what. He was he was put out the pasture. He was headed to the glue factory. He gets to Minnesota and his career is resurrected. You know, we've had several guys this year who've had their careers resurrected. Baker Mayfield. You know, I, it's so it's so uh, uh, justifying to see that happen to these guys because teams sold them out so easily. Cleveland would probably give their left nut to to have Baker Mayfield back yeah. over yeah. this clown that they gave all that yeah. money to. You know, yeah. like I, I'm just I'm happy for those guys to go on and, and to be playing so well. Uh, that that's just gratifying to me. You know, chops. I'm kind of going to go with not only the Vikings, but I'm going to go with the Chiefs too. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to go with the Chiefs. I don't know if San Francisco's playing as good of ball as you think they are. Ayuk is not producing since he got his contract. They still don't have CMC. Okay. Uh, their defense has not looked as lights out as it had been. Now maybe they then maybe they pull it back together going into this week because this is a big game. But I just I don't know. I I like I really like what what Mahomes does, and he has not had a game to be reckoned with yet this year. You know, uh, last I week. Know, man, I don't get that. How do you like six touchdowns and six interceptions? I mean. Does that sound like Mahomes to you? No, I know that's no. why. That's only why because they've been getting lucky. I don't want to say lucky, but I'm they... gonna say the boy six and six. Damn yeah. it, something yeah. going on over there. Yeah, 
They well, should have lost week one. Noticed, but, should. yo, Mahomes, if you hear me, uh, you got a guy over there called Xavier Worthy. You probably heard of him. You drafted him from Texas. Throw the damn ball. Yeah, and think about this, Jay. He's got Xavier Worthy, and a rookie, and Juju Smith-Schuster. That's his top two receivers right now. Yeah. That's his guys. How can that be possible? Juju had 130 yards last week. Yeah. He yeah. sat out there for two weeks on, uh, as an un, uh, a free agent. He got cut. Yeah. Sat there, then Mahomes once again resurrects that guy's career. Uh, yeah. they, you know, Pittsburgh's been looking for a receiver since the beginning of time after they traded Deontay Johnson. Mahomes not getting the Kelsey the ball as much as he did <laughs> last season. I mean, he's really getting almost getting away from uh Kelsey a lot, which is really crazy. I mean, that's vintage I've never seen before. They usually guy they always throw the ball. Yeah. You know? But Kelsey's kind of taking a back seat a little bit over there. Well, you know who had a big game last week was um was Kittle. Kittle yeah. had nice. He had a big yeah. game. He had been nicked up for a few weeks, even though yeah. he played through it one week, maybe two weeks. But uh, he had a hell of a game last week. Um, you know, unless Kansas City takes him off the field, he might be the go-to. He might be the go-to guy for for Purdy. Yeah, San Francisco, the Mason's over there. He's kind of banged up and questionable. I think Tyler Hunt is getting reborn a little, getting a little bit. I mean, he's putting us a pretty good yardage. Uh, I'm I'm looking for Hunt to have a pretty good day out there, uh, feasting on San Francisco's defense, honestly. It'll be interesting to see what happens out there. Hey, let's move into to a little Steeler talk. Um, obviously, Tops and I are big Steeler fans. Um, was this a rebound game for them, going to Vegas and, and just smacking them around? The defense was lights out, okay? Yeah. Uh, they put 32 points on the board. The Steelers haven't put 32 points on the board since uh, I think Ben Roethlisberger was the quarterback, yeah. to be honest with you. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, they didn't give up the points, the defense, but they got turnovers this week like they did last week. What yeah. they do, the offense capitalized this week, which they didn't do last week. You know what I'm saying? Against They capitalized against the Raiders, which they didn't do against Dallas. But I'm glad because they needed it. They as in the offense needed it because they needed to show they could put some points up. Now, I understand NFL is a week-to-week, what have you done for me lately league? I get that. And whatever you did last week, doesn't carry over to this week. I get that, but I'm hoping they can build on the momentum with the confidence because the Jets are coming in and the Jets defense hasn't played up to the hype they were given preseason, but they have the talent on that defensive side of the ball. So I'm, I'm hoping they they open it up a little bit, and I'm hoping that that gives them the confidence to get the ball rolling and get that off. Whispers in Pittsburgh and all of this. So the Steelers have played one team that's above 500 with Atlanta, and that's four and two. But Denver, Chargers, Colts, Dallas, all of them are just barely 500 teams. And then you get Vegas 1-4 and four, and you get all excited because you beat a 1-4 team. Ooh, I'm so happy. Well, it, 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 you're right. You're right. No, it, no, they no, are, they're, right. They're, Hold on a minute. Don't get – look, they have not really been challenged to say that. Let's just be real. Let's but, be real. We have, but we have to get the, the wins now because they're, they're – See, they're there you go. That's just how you know your team sucks. We got to get the wins now. Well, hold on. Nobody, even you, nobody, even the fan is horrible. Jesus. No, nobody, nobody see second half of the season is hard as the Steelers. So you got to think you about gotta, me. You, you, you got to get those in like, now. Chops, I know you think about me, don't you? <laughs> 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 I, I know I'm in your nightmare in some kind of way as a Steelers fan. Gotta get, they got to get them, man. That second half of the season is a gauntlet. Who's that gauntlet? creeping in my window? I'm <laughs> hey, they got, in 10 days, they've got the Ravens, the Eagles, and Kansas City. In 10 days. I know. Wow. You know, that that's insane. Wow. And that's, that's at the wow. very end of the season. You know, so yeah, if they don't man. get – Holy you cow. Know, Going to five wins this week is going to be crucial for them. Going to six wins against the Giant going to be crucial for them. They got to go into their bye week. It's six and two, in my opinion, because coming out of that bye week, they got to play five hundred ball at least. They got to. I'll tell you, hey, I'll tell you right now. Hey, you're twenty fifth in touchdowns, and he has a QBR. I'm talking about Fields. Fields has a QBR of fifty four point zero against mediocre, barely 500 teams. I don't think that's a rebound. I don't think it's in any game. You haven't been truly tested yet. I think you're beating up on some little uh, nerdy kids that probably hide and quiver in the corner, and now you think you're something. That's what I think you are. But, but see, that, that, 
Three, but she did. That's what I said. It's the NFL. Any given Sunday. Three, Any given Sunday. Three. You can be an upset. <laughs> it ain't college where you got to win and win in fabulous fashion. Oh, right you now you want to beat tenders until you beat somebody. You go beat Minnesota, and I'll give you mad respect. I think they would beat Minnesota. That defense is that defense is vicious. That defense is finding its stride. It's the offense that, that holds them back. Their offensive yes. line – is missing uh, their number one draft pick, who was started at right tackle, Batanu. They're missing uh, James Daniels, their starting right guard. And Warren week, hasn't been healthy. No, and, and this week they're going to be missing Frazier, possibly this yeah. weekend next. You know, uh, I mean, that, that, that hurts. Now, the whispers, I don't know if they're whispers anymore. Uh, what's coming out of a uh, Steeler camp is that Russ Wilson is going to have him have the range this week. I don't and get I don't, it. I don't, I don't get that. I don't get oh, that. By the way, hey, the one thing I didn't mention when I said field, which is actually a really good positive for him, is he only has one interception. You know, yeah. so that's not bad. He's not turning the ball over. If they could just figure out how to run that jump, that, that hard ball, you know, you know, or that Billichek dink and dunk offense, you know, nothing crazy. They're going to be fine. I mean, they can go a long way. I, I don't get why Tomlin's doing that. If that is if that is true and, and, and Fields is sitting the bench and Russ is starting, I don't get that. And here's why. And just hear me out. Just hear me out. But, okay, first off, why now? Why not do it in the bye week? The Jets are going to be hyped because they got Devontae Adams. So they're going to believe – even if he doesn't play, I believe the Jets are going to want to rebound from this game against the Bills. The defense has been talked about bad lately for the Jets, so they probably want to come out and show what they're going to do. Our offensive line has been damn near Swiss cheese. And if Russ is back there, they are coming after his old ass. They know where he's going to be. Of course. And then, and then, and then this week, you need Fields' legs to hey, roll Charles, out. Hey, Charles, what is, hey, what is, what is Pittsburgh – what is Pittsburgh on the hook on Russell Wilson's contract? Is it still uh, one, it's a million, it's a million it's a, bucks? A million. It's a, so they got it from Denver. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's a million I mean, bucks. I was gonna, at first, I was going to say, well, if he was the highest paid guy, I bet management is probably telling him to play. Him. Yeah, but that if ain't it. Man. For a million dollars, why would you not go with your hot hand? I just don't see the benefit of There's starting no benefit. Russ now because that defense is coming after him. In regards of how bad his numbers have been, and or should I say how not, they haven't been great. As you just pointed out, Fields' numbers haven't been great. I get that. However, he hasn't he hasn't hurt us, like you said, only one INT, but his legs have helped a lot rolling out, being able to buy time, scrambling, being able to buy time to see the field. Russ is not going to be able to do that. And I'm a Russ guy. I wanted Russ starting from the jump, but – I, I don't get this. I just don't get this. You can play Russ if you have Fatanu, James Daniels, Zach Frazier. If you'd have had your normal starting line going right there. Yeah, yeah but if this were first, we'd all be drunk. We can't do that. You know what I mean? <laughs> we we can't. That's what's worrying me. Why why are you you're setting Russ up for failure in my eyes with it? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Well, he's coming off the cat injury. Kind of set his own stuff up for failure. When he left Seattle and had that, I'm gonna have my own office away from the clubhouse. Now, Russell Williams failed himself. Okay, he lost the hunger. He's not hungry anymore. He's just playing passive at this point, just like Aaron Rodgers. They're all just passive. I mean, come on, you got one Super Bowl. Great, great. I'm sure your whole team has kind of carried you too, but you haven't done shit since. Neither yeah. one of them have done shit. Well, he had, he had 26 touchdown passes and eight interceptions last year in Denver. That's that's yeah. what he had, okay? Yeah. And that was but behind a porous line. I don't know. I, I just don't agree with Tomlin. I, I'm with you, you know. Hey, uh, I think it's time to move off from Russell Williams and call Russell Williams who Russell Williams is. A backup. Uh, yeah. Jay, I think this message is for you. Somebody needs you to hit them back on Grinder. <laughs> Oh, no, that was that was uh, say John uh, dyslexic. I don't know what that's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> hey, fellas, let me take us into the last topic. This is an interesting one too. Uh, Louisiana high school quarterback from Evangel Christian Academy, Peyton Houston's the boy's name, threw for eight hundred and fifteen yards in a game, and they lost 77-76 in o overtime. Uh, the high school record though for passing is held by. Former West Virginia quarterback Will Greer, uh, Will Greer, Greer at 837 yeah. yards. Uh, fellas, thoughts on a kid 
throwing for 815 yards. Yeah, he's a good. He's on a good. Uh, I mean, he's on a good offensive team with a really shitty defense. Yeah, that's that's it, man. When I you're mean, let's for- be honest. I mean, if yeah. it's 77, 76, obviously neither one of those damn defenses is doing shit. Yeah, that's the bottom line. You lost. If you look at it right now, if you look at it in the standing right now, I think they're like one and seven, and then like one and eight in district. I mean, this is a bottom rung team. So, like, I guess it's a good player on a really shitty team. Welcome, welcome to the world of sports. (laughs) Yeah, that to me, when you first off, when you throw that many yards in a game, you played the entire game because your defense (laughs) kept giving up points. Because you know what I'm saying, so. It's like literally, hey, there's literally no run game. None. 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 Their run run game were screened. You know, uh, (laughs) yak, quick, quick slot, quick slot throws. So it has to be, even even like Will Greer, when you see a lot of these guys with crazy, crazy high school numbers, then when they get to college, you don't do as well. Or guys that have like some, a lot of the Texas Tech quarterbacks before your boy Mahomes came in because Texas Tech was always putting some nice quarterbacks with great numbers in the league. Then they fizzled out. They didn't That's do anything. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I see it. Like I said, Will Gray throws for 800 and some in high school. You get to college, you're okay. But now what has he been on a different team for the last five years? He's in the league, Will Greer. You know, it's just – just can't get it. But I, I don't – I don't – yeah, great. But let him have a parade for you at the high school and, and – I mean, have, you know, I mean – Let's, I mean, it really doesn't really matter a whole lot when you, you know, if your teams really aren't that good. I mean, you're 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 not even ranked in the top twenty five. I mean, come to Texas and we are out hell. North Shore High School, number eight in the nation. Let's go. Man, hey, great yeah. show, fellas. Love the input, love the energy. Thanks so much to Jay for joining us. Jay, go ahead and give him all your stuff again before we leave the show. Hey, I'm Jason, I'm Jay McLove, and you can find me on everything that's ESEN related. Uh, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, whatever. That's where I'm at. Always putting content. I also uh, coast to coast on Northeast Streaming Sports and 100 yards of football. Don't forget to check out the link tree for ESEN, which is in the chat. Chops, break it down for us. You know, your boy on, on the Twitter is the real Big Chops. On the gram, it's Big Chops 824. And, of course, on Facebook, my, my government, Michael Gregory Mills, and on TikTok, it's Big Chops 79. But you can find me anywhere, anywhere in the ESCN. I'm on there. I love being on the network. Just keep giving us, showing us love, support. We appreciate it. Hey, big shout-out to uh, everybody from the Original Sports Podcast. Um, you can check out our pod page, which is our webpage, uh, podpage.com, Original Sports Podcast with Mark Meriday. Uh, like our Facebook page. Join our conversation on Twitter, uh, follow our Instagram. All those are, uh, or excuse me, uh, watch our TikToks. Um, all those are OSP with Eminem. You can also check out our Instagram, check out our YouTube for all our past shows. And if you can't make it to watch us on your computer, you can watch us on Roku. Uh, we'd love to have you join us on there. A big shout out to all our networks. Let's talk sports, sideline sports. Uh, Manning Media, Peak One Sports, and of course, ESEN, Elite Sports and Entertainment Network. Again, thanks to Jay for joining us tonight. And that Roku show is Tuesday nights from 7 to 8, same time as our, our live show on here. Hey, feel free to let us know if you have any comments, questions, suggestions for future guests. Just throw it out there at us. We'll take it uh, by emailing us at original sports podcast at gmail.com uh thanks to steve medley for doing the voice intro charlie hodgson for the music catch us next week to experience the o on the original sports podcast 